your doctor. Most of the doctors usually just need one blood. Okay. Oh there again, they're all into saving <laughs> their pennies. This is their profit. So when they see you throwing cotton balls in the trash or put out too many gauze, they freak out because every penny to them is their profit. So they may not want to waste that second glove. You'll find out what the protocol is. So we've got the Hemocult, which you know how to work now. And we've got the developer. What's it called? Guayac. Guayac. This is a proctoscope. So what the doctor's going to do, he's going to put his glove on and he's going to take a little KY jelly and just put it on the tip. Okay, what position is a patient going to be in for a rectal exam? Left side. Left side. What's it called? Sims. Sims. No, it's actually we're going to put them in a knee chest. Oh, knee chest, oh. chest just on their side. So oh. he'll, he'll just, now so they're... like fetal position? Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, yeah. but on the left side. That's your right side. Left gives us better access to the, the rectum and the, the sigmoid colon. So he's going to put two gloves on if he's got to pull the cheeks apart and do this. But if he's just doing a quick prostate exam, that's all he does is feel that prostate and then he's out of there. Uh, when he comes out, he'll have just a little bit of stool on his glove. And that's why if you were in the room with him, you would hand him this. He would put the stool sample on window A and B and hand it to you. And then you would turn it around, open it up, and develop it. Okay. Why does it have to be two? Why does it have to be two? Oh, yeah. Because they like to see a sampling from different areas. Obviously, oh, okay. you're not going to get that if you've just gone and done a re rectal okay. exam. But, um, Brenda, behind you, there on the table, there's a package, an envelope. This is what the doctor, if this comes up positive for your patient, he may send a pack like this home with your patient. And you're going to have to give them the instructions. And in there, there's three of these. And it comes with instructions, but you're going to verbally talk the patient through it, okay? So um, you want to take the stool specimen from one place and put it in window A, and then technically you want to take specimen from a, another section and put it in window B. That's why they have the two windows. Um, section of what? Yeah. Of stool. So oh, they, I see what you're saying. Wow. So, the best way to collect stool, and, and, and I want to show you some other pictures in the classroom, is if you tell the patients go home, urinate, okay, then lift up the lid, the seat, and put down some saran wrap, okay? Kind of make it dip down. Don't make it nice and tight, okay? Oh, we'll, like used to trick we want people it to, in school. Yeah, we want this to dip down a little bit. <laughs> then they can put the, the seat down and sit down and have bowel movement, okay? They may have, uh, you know, explosive <laughs> diarrhea. It may be just really liquidy, or or it may be a form stool, whatever. Then they're going to take a little bit of that stool specimen from the plastic and put it on the hemocult card. And then they'll take it from another area of the stool and put it on window B. So there, you know, there may be blood in one place but not in the other. So that's why we want that. And then by doing this, they have three separate bowel movements that they're collecting. So they have to write their name and their date and the time on this. Because maybe it's all the same day. Maybe they have diarrhea and they've had three bowel movements in an hour. So it's real important for them to write that information in. Sometimes they have to collect stool specimens for ova and parasites, or they call it an O and P. And it's a little, I'll show you a picture of it. It's a little plastic container and it's got a built-in fork spoon. And so they scoop up the stool and put it in this little bottle and they fill the fill line they've actually got some preservative in there. I believe it's just formaldehyde. And they put that in. So you scoop it up, bring it to the fill line, then you can shake it and put it down. Then you have another one to do the same thing with. Shake it and put it down. Then they usually give you a sterile urine cup. <clears throat> that they open up and the doctor would give you a sterile tongue depressor. So they come individually wrapped as well. And you peel it open because we don't want to introduce any foreign bacteria. We just want to get the bacteria that's in the stool. So they pick that up and they put some of that in that sterile urine cup, close it, write their name and their date. But then that has to be refrigerated because there's no preservative in that one, okay? So you can put it in a plastic bag and then you can put it in a brown bag and say do not open and stick it in the refrigerator until you can get to the doctors. They don't like this. They don't like going home and collecting stool specimens, and I get it. I don't like developing them. But sometimes if they've got, 
you know, especially if they've been out in the mountains camping and drinking stream water, or they've been traveling to another country and they have dysentery and they have just terrible diarrhea for weeks. We've got to find out. Yeah, we got to find out what bacteria it is to know how to treat it effectively. Okay. So you all have to um, show me how to do this. You might want to take a picture of this. I wouldn't put the lubricating um, gel on the tray. I would probably just leave it like this. Now, when he goes in and he uses this proctoscope, there again, it's lubricated on the tip. When it gets in there, he pulls this out. And then he usually has a gooseneck light that he can bring up there. And he can look in and see all that rectal mucosa. He can look for hemorrhoids. So this is just really the lower section. We're not going up to the sigmoid. This is just the very lowest section. We're looking for fissures, uh, fistulas, or hemorrhoids, okay? That, right that is it. This would be going home with a patient if, if they had a problem. It's not hard, just think through the process. Okay, the doctors. What's the most important thing on the tray? Gloves. Gloves, okay. That's called guaiac. It's, it's not written on there? It should be. It says you know, kayak. Sense up. <laughs> kayak. Oh. oh. I'm never going to remember that name. I don't know why I'm thinking about that. I thought wow. it all had it on there. But like on the NCCT, they refer to guayac, and you're supposed to know what guayac. it is. Guayac. Ju. Ju. G. U. I. A. C. or A. I. C. I can't remember the order of those last two. A I C Guayac. Um, okay, the next week we'll learn how to do a pap tray. Gentlemen, you have to learn how to do a pap tray too, because just for externship, or even if you've got a job, you could be managing an OBGYN's office, you know, and you may have to set up a tray. You're never going to do a stand in as a chaperone, but you may have to know what's on the tray and yes. make sure it, the tray is set up. If worse comes to worse. A I C A. Oh, okay, I wasn't even close. G U A I A C. G U A. So it's like both combined. Yeah. G U A A I C. G U A I A C. Oh. So there's an I in between the two A's. Wow. Why? So, Miss T, yes, like, are there any tests or like so crosses or anything that we're not like? Females are not allowed to be in there for a male? Nope, we can be in there anytime. So it's no matter what? Okay. But usually the doctor goes in and handles the gentleman's exam by, by himself. himself. Yeah. Just because it might make it okay. Now, if you have a female PA or a nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. or even a female doctor, she may want someone to come in with her. Okay. Just to, just... Make it comfortable. Yeah. For sexual harassment. You just <laughs> never know when you're going to have litigation filed against you. So. True? This is where your job comes into play. I mean, mm -hmm. you may be in there watching a pap smear, standing there bored stiff, but you really need to be down there watching to make sure he's doing everything right, because you're going to have to go to court and testify that he was not inappropriate by any means. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you know he knows how to do a pap, and, and most of the doctors are just fine, but there again, you're the one that's going to be called into court to testify. You've got to be able to read your own progress notes. You're the defining and, factor. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. are. You are. You're, you're his, you know, savior mm -hmm. to state under oath that he did everything appropriately. So, oh, crap. Okay. Didn't. 